This is not my usual travel film. The kids are along for the ride. The destination is what was, at the turn of the 20th century, the imperial capital of the vast Austro-Hungarian Empire. The history, the music, the culture, the food, the fun, all await us. We have four days. Rachel is composing a classical string quartet for me. Nate supplied most of the time-lapse clips. We even took a day trip down the Danube to Bratislava in Slovakia. So here we go. I wanted to take my family away for a long weekend. But where? We all wanted to go somewhere we hadn't been before. And after deep deliberation and some research on flights and Airbnb, it was decided. Vienna, Austria. This is the view from our apartment. Nate booked a delightful B&B, a four-bedroom apartment, and Benny is showing us around. Spacious living room, great bedrooms, all off a main corridor. The kids loved it. Even had a baby chair in the kitchen. Two bathrooms, washer and dryer, clean, modern, and Andreas was an excellent host. So come and enjoy it with us. We'd arrived late the night before, so we were all rested and ready to explore. The apartment was next to McDonald's, a spa across the road, railway station nearby, and metro and tram stops outside. Not only that, but it was only a short walk to the town centre. The kids already getting bored. Nate trying out his new gimbal. This is really fun on a beautiful day in Vienna. Just arrived and getting to see the sights. First impression, this is a great place. Clean, orderly, friendly people, and great weather and many things to experience. After a few minutes, we reached the Danau Canal actually an arm of the Danube. It was at this point that we checked out the ferry to Bratislava and decided on a day trip. Some people have tried to rename this canal the Little Danube as it skirts the city and is joined to the Danube at both ends. I now realized I'd forgotten all the German I ever learned. I still remember the sausages from my last visit to Austria skiing in the Tyrol a long time ago. So we enjoyed some local food. Good. There are lots of things to see and explore and chances to meet local people. and some great al fresco eating. Apparently people ask, 
Where are the kangaroos? No comment. As one of the most famous historic places of Europe, it has great architecture, beautiful buildings, and history is around every corner. It's interesting, with many restaurants in the street, even the shops get outside, and arcades and alleys that intrigue the visitor. Where does this lead? The most famous Wiener Schnitzel in the world is here. And this alley leads to St. Stephen's Church, which has one of the tallest spires in the world at 446 feet. The horse and carriage is a favourite with tourists. I heard it cost 80 euros for half an hour. They were certainly doing good business. We then decided to savour the renowned Wiener Schnitzel. Excellent it was too. One of the joys of travel, local food. The kids then took their nap. There are times the absence of cars and the presence of the horse-drawn carriages takes us back a century or more. This is a monument to the Great Plague of Vienna, which occurred in 1679, believed to have been the bubonic plague, carried by fleas and associated with the black rat and other rodents. The city was crippled by the epidemic, claiming an estimated 75,000 lives. We then came across a plaque stating Hans Christian Andersen lived here. On inspection, we found out he was born on Amy's birthday and died on Nathan's birthday. He lived in Vienna for a while. The kids are amazing. They seem to be enjoying the whole experience in their own way. They love trains and they consider a tram is a train. We wanted to taste the famous Viennese coffee and chocolate cake and decided to try it at this famous landmark. Though it was not cheap, it was very good. The kids loved it as every 30 seconds a tram passed and they would wave. We had a classic coffee and Sasha Torte chocolate cake. Bella will one day be a mountaineer, perhaps. So we sat in the sun, enjoyed the coffee and view in this illustrious location as we watched the world go by. and the horses. We then strolled over to City Hall Square, 
where the film festival is taking place. Unfortunately, the films only start when it gets dark, so we continued our stroll. The votive church in the distance, past the university, And then, after a quick snack, on to see a classical music and opera performance that was excellent. We even got to take the children in and a photo with some of the musicians. Then out into the night and some happy noodles to finish off a great day in this extraordinary city. Another sunny day as we set out to explore. An important part of the experience was the actual place where we stayed, central Vienna, like visiting Jerusalem and staying in the old city. As soon as we walked outside, we were soaking in Vienna, so to speak. In minutes, we were back at the Danube Canal, Certainly a feature that enhances the enjoyment of the city, especially on a summer's day. First job was to get the boat tickets to Bratislava for the next day. Everybody in agreement, let's do it. Then into the city again. What to do today? In any great city there are places of interest, the historic sites, the iconic buildings, but whenever I visit such cities, I always feel I got a more intimate insight, the kind of insight that comes from simply walking through the place, observing, just being there. Something, it has to be said, that is so difficult to communicate with the camera, so all I can say is simply, walk with us. I'll try not to talk too much, except to say Mozart and Beethoven often walk through here. It was here, St. Stephen's Church, that Beethoven discovered the absolute totality of his deafness when he saw birds fly out of the bell tower as a result of the bells tolling and realized he had not heard the bells. A walk through Vienna certainly has some unusual pathways, even through the courtyards of buildings. but it's time to delve into history. This is the apartment building where Mozart lived in his heyday, now preserved and open to the public. It's called Mozart House and costs 11 euros to visit. His home was on the second floor, quite a large place, consisting of four large rooms, two small ones, and the kitchen. No filming inside is allowed. He moved out of here in 1788 and died in his home in the suburbs on the 5th of December, 1791, when he was only 35. The cause of his death uncertain, but recent studies 
speculate it was a bacterial infection that caused other complications. We continued our walk into the heart of Vienna, always aware that this was one of the most important cities of its day. The National Library then on to the Romanesque St. Michael's Church. Which is near the Hofburg Palace. But it's time for lunch, and this has to be one of the best locations in Vienna. The kids are hungry, the girls are hungry, and our order is in. Now that was a great meal. I had the Wiener Schnitzel again and the Vienna coffee. Dessert was apple strudel with fresh cream and don't ask how much it cost, but it was worth it. And the waiters were first class too and great views. Here's Princess Isabella. Stop! She's very obedient. She gave the food a high five. Ben always finds things to do. He loves water and our friendly waiter obliges. Early evening, sun setting, here one embraces the atmosphere all the more. The statue is Kaiser Francis I, first emperor of Austria, who before that was actually Francis II, the last holy Roman emperor. By the way, the German word Kaiser, meaning emperor, is simply a transliteration of the Latin word Caesar, which in Latin is pronounced Kaiser. Just over a hundred years ago, Vienna was the imperial capital of the vast Austro-Hungarian Empire that included about a dozen present European countries. There have been times when perhaps Vienna was the most important place on earth. It was from the balcony here in the Heldenplatz that the most infamous Austrian, Adolf Hitler, proclaimed the annexing of Austria as he sought to build a third German empire. That was the 15th of March, 1938. We're all enjoying Vienna. Once we understand the importance of the place, we better understand the grandeur of it. For the tourist, it provides a great wealth of history and culture. The whole city is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's known as the City of Music, home to Beethoven, Mozart, Haydn, Strauss, Schubert, and many more. 
Some call it the city of dreams. Maybe because Sigmund Freud dreamt here. I found it to be a fascinating place, a joy to visit, that certainly gave us plenty of photo fodder. Nate shooting with the iPhone got some great shots. The sky was very cooperative. The dark clouds creating a great atmosphere. Pedestrians be careful, wouldn't want to be run over by a horse and carriage. Then coffee time, we really need invigorating. Final plan for the day is to go to the Prata Museum Park. We need to take the U-Bahn or Underground Railway. So as evening falls, we have an enjoyable walk through the city as the kids enjoy an enjoyable nap. These short interludes are my favorite times. The times to experience what a film can't do. One has to be here to do it. That's why you should come here. The train is relatively new, fun and efficient. We're heading toward Leopoldstadt. The kids like trains. In no time we arrive, loving parents take their kids to the fun park. So here we are, and for your information, I'm the parent, and I'm taking the kids. The grandkids get to watch. The big attraction is the Vienna Giant Wheel. A 212 foot tall ferris wheel that is one of the oldest. Constructed in 1897, it was the world's tallest until 1985. It really is a giant wheel and actually has a dinner for two cabin where a couple can enjoy a gourmet meal. Now that has to be unique, a romantic setting and wine in a three-course menu only cost 345 euros for two. A real bargain. The kids had a ball and we got great views over the city as the sun set. In World War II, it was owned by a Jew, Edward Steiner who was shipped off to Auschwitz and murdered. Nate was blowing raspberries on Ben's tummy and an Austrian girl next to me told me with a huge grin, my dad used to do that to me. Precious moments, memories, then it was playtime. Do we ever have fun? One more time, slow motion. A great day. Today will be different. We're taking a trip to another country, Slovakia, and more specifically, the capital city of Bratislava. 
It's about 40 miles away from Vienna down the Danube. So what better way to visit than a river cruise? Not only that, but we decided to indulge the kids and let them return by their favorite mode of transport, the train. Well, actually these little 20-month-old kids are well-traveled. Between them, they have about 150,000 air miles, so a trip down the Danube is kids' play, so to speak. We're on the Twin City Liner. It will take 75 minutes, reaching speeds of 50 miles an hour, and the one-way ticket only costs 30 euros. The ferry gives some information, in English, for tourists as we make our way there. The kids enjoying watching the world go by. We can also go on deck. Nate taking his 4K iPhone video. And this is his shot. The boat really does move fast and it's fun to come up on deck as we speed down the river. We soon arrive. The fun and sights of the trip making the time fly by. The iconic Bratislava Castle being the first thing we see. Then we get the kids ready for the adventure. We're soon getting our first trip, a city bus tour that includes a visit to the castle. Already I feel like a tourist, but I have to admit that for someone who's never been here and will only be here a few hours and has two little kids in tow, this is a great way to start. Jump off the boat, jump on the bus, take the tour. See the city, the sights. The atmosphere, the trams. Bratislava Castle. The sign tells us it dates back to the Stone Age and has a written record dated 907 AD. The imposing rectangular building with four corner towers stands on a rocky hill of the little Carpathian Mountains directly above the Danube River in the heart of the city. It's certainly a dominant feature of the city and has been for centuries. Queen Maria Theresa of Austria and Hungary in the 18th century spent much time here. The location provides views of Bratislava, Austria, and, in clear weather, even parts of Hungary.
The castle has lasted so long simply because it's strategically located in the center of Europe and, like Vienna, in a pass between the Little Carpathians and the Alps. It was also, from ancient times, an important ford used to cross the Danube River. After the castle, we continued our city tour. The new bridge has a UFO restaurant on top of it with spectacular views. We ended the tour in the Slovak National Theater in the center of town. And guess what? It's shopping time. For souvenirs, that is and a walk around. The Carlton Hotel overlooking the tree-lined esplanade. This is a beautiful place to relax. As I've said before, the kids love water. We're enjoying this trip. The boat trip here was fantastic. The orientation bus trip, a great way to start. And now, a chance to soak in the atmosphere of this medieval city. But it's time to eat. And Rachel wants to try the local food. Great idea. This is sirloin steak, pork loin, ham, mushroom, french fries, and rice. This is duck, pork skewer, and devil's fire. And it was all as good as it looked. The challenge of this trip was to have fun as a family. It was a joy to have the kids with us, though a challenge, which actually enhanced the enjoyment of it all. A shot with the iconic workman is a must. Then my favorite pastime of strolling and observing. Perhaps a better word is perceiving. Mozart is just as much loved here as in Vienna. And yes, Mozart was here too. Not living here, he just had a gig here. An excellent string quartet was playing a little night music. So we got to enjoy. They were excellent. And their music provided a great backdrop to enjoying the sights and sounds of this fascinating city. But did I mention the tastes too? Coffee in this part of the world is renowned. Bella draws our attention to it. In no time at all, we're savoring the extreme pleasure of a cup of Bratislava coffee. Excellent. We are actually surrounded by a very pleasant city on all sides. 
Now we'd seen the plaque that said Mozart was here. I didn't see one that said Napoleon was here, though he most certainly was. The tower is actually Michael's Gate, the only city gate that remains of the medieval fortifications and is one of the oldest town buildings. We walked through it into the old town. But by now we're making our way to the railway station. We're actually a little early because we don't yet have our train tickets. On one side we have the old town, on the other side the new city. Then the bus station, which is right outside the railway station. So we buy the tickets, we have an ice cream, and then get our seats on the train. which takes just over an hour back to Vienna. And cost 15 euros one way, including Wi-Fi. It's been a memorable and fun day. When we got back to Vienna, we jumped on the U-Bahn back to the apartment. Now that was a fun day. Vienna has been a pleasure. The Bratislava interlude was excellent in that it was an interlude, a change, doing different things and seeing a different place and culture. Now we have one more day here. What to do first? Well, we decided on a tram ride, a special one. You see, the walls of Vienna were demolished in 1857 and in their place a broad boulevard called the Ringstrasse was built, which, like the walls of times past, encircles the city. Unlike many historic cities, we cannot walk around its walls, but we can ride the Ring Tram, which circumnavigates the city along the Ringstrasse allowing the visitor to see imposing historic buildings and see the sights of Vienna. So here we go. As we travel around, I'll tell you some interesting facts about this beautiful city. Since 2009, the human resource consulting firm Mercer has ranked Vienna first in its annual quality of living survey of hundreds of cities around the world. In other words, it's a great place to live. It's also a great place to visit. It welcomes over 6.8 million tourists a year. There's our favorite cafe. The tram ride lets us get a look at the city in half an hour and only costs eight euros. And it does have a headphone narration in eight languages. Though there's no hop on, hop off option, it's nevertheless an excellent opportunity for a quick look at the city.
When we get off the tram, we're back where we started, right on the edge of the old city. So what next? We're gonna get my Don't miss the ice cream in Vienna. There are plenty of places to buy it. Next stop was a visit to the Romanesque and Gothic St. Stephen's Cathedral, first consecrated in 1147. It's the most important religious building in Vienna, and yet fortunate that it's still standing, simply because the captain of the retreating German army at the end of World War II disregarded orders from the then city commandant, the war criminal Joseph Dietrich, who ordered him to fire a hundred shells and leave it as just debris and ashes. When one looks at the beauty of this place, it's inconceivable that someone would want to destroy it. Gothic choir, built in 1340, a work of art. We took the lift to the top of the North Tower to get some great views over the city. Up here, the contrast between the old and the new is particularly striking. In front are the Vienna woods, part of the foothills of the Alps. The votive church with its twin spires, magnificent on the skyline. The roof is a work of art in itself, said to be the glory of St. Stephen's. Ornately patterned and covered by 230,000 glazed tiles. On the north side, the coat of arms of the city of Vienna and of the Republic of Austria are depicted. We all had fun. The South Tower is 446 feet tall, the highest point in the city, and affectionately referred to as Steffi. Ben was learning to fly in case he fell off. We climbed the North Tower as high as we could. The kids have certainly no fear of heights. Then we had a walk. It's certainly a beautiful city and a great place to visit. Clean, safe, History all around, especially music. We all loved it.
we're nearing the end of the Odyssey and making our way to see one last landmark. The statue of Johann Strauss. Then it's time to leave. What a trip it's been. What a memory we've made. And soon, the familiar sights of London come into view. <laughs>